and join us in the altars, in the auditorium. We exist at Oasis to host the presence of God. And that starts right here and right now. And his word says that his house shall be called the house of prayer. And in Isaiah 56, verse 7, it says that he makes joyful those who are in his house of prayer. And so this morning, as soon as we open our mouths and as soon as we start to partner with him, he begins to move on our behalf. And I want you to know that your prayers matter and your faith matters. It matters not only for yourself, but also those that are going to enter this room at 10 o'clock and after that are broken in need of a living God. And so your intercession right now, what we're doing is we're stepping into the gap for those and we're going in to usher in the presence of God with our faith. And so if you walk in intercession, I'm going to ask you to come boldly to these altars right now step into your gift of intercession and if you want it and you're hungry for more you get that by rubbing shoulders with those that walk in intercession so this morning I know I've got intercessors in the house and I'm going to ask you to exercise right now father we come to you right now and we ask that you bring your kingdom to earth God we thank you that your word says that when we pray you answer and you answer quickly God we come into a
lift up the desperate praise. Oh, King Jesus, come on, just for a few moments. Could you just lift up an inner cry? Come on, we came for more than just a church service. We didn't come to be comfortable, but to be undignified. Can you just make that declaration? I did not come to be comfortable. I've come to be undignified. King Jesus, today, we declare you get our best, because you gave your best. Come on, just a few moments. Right now, let's grow in praise. Let's grow in personal praise. Come on, just fix your eyes on Jesus. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Come on, out of your own mouth. Oh, lift you up. We 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 lift you up. Come on. Today you're exalted, Jesus. Come on. We lift you up.
is our weapon this morning. Come on, if praise is your weapon, just begin to lift that up in this house. Come on, praise is our weapon. We honor you, Jesus. And this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise, sing it out. This is what living looks like. This 
This is what freedom feels There it is, come on. This is what heaven sounds hey. like. We praise you, we praise you. This, this is, is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what heaven looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giant.
to praise and we were made to praise yes we were made to praise we were made to praise oh we were made to praise we were made to praise oh we were made to praise we were made to praise oh we were made to praise oh we were made to praise we were made to praise. Oh, 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 we were made to praise. We were made to praise. Oh, we were made to praise. to tremble Don't 
darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. So when you walk into the room, every heart, every heart starts burning. Cause nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet. It's really all about him. Let's give him permission. Come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Oh, we want you. Come and consume. So come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Come on. This may be new to you. Just give Jesus permission to be Jesus. Come on, sing, come and consume. We're going to let you be Jesus here this morning. Come on, we're going to let you be Jesus here this morning. We'll let you be King Jesus here this morning. Come and consume. Come and consume, God.
are here not just to check off a box of something to do on a Sunday morning, but we are here to feast on you. Come on, if you're hungry and thirsty this morning, why don't you find somebody beside you and say, I'm hungry. Let's get into the word. Let's eat today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As y'all are headed back, I'm going to ask Faith to come up. Man, don't you just love Jesus? Amen. I love the presence of God. I'm just going to tell you this. There is nothing like coming together corporately with the body of believers and just loving on Jesus and experiencing his presence and his love. Amen. Well, I want to say welcome to Oasis Church and Cattle Mills. We're honored and blessed that you're with us today. Faith and her husband, Nick, are our youth leaders. So if you have teenagers, they need to connect with Faith. But we've asked Faith to come and just share her testimony and her story for a few minutes this morning. So let's give it up for Faith as she shares. Good morning, Oasis. this morning goes so in line with my testimony. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. Um, my parents got a divorce when I was a baby. So that was an open door for the enemy to steal my identity from the start. And then I lived in a great home. My mom was great. My stepdad was great. My dad was great. Well, my dad passed away when I was five years old. So then as a child, I thought, well, I have nobody like, Lord, you took my dad when I was so young. You're going to take everybody else from me. You're going to take everything from me. Why would I serve you? Well, my mom and my stepdad raised us in church. And so I went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, just like how a lot of people in this area do. But I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I never pursued it. I watched my mom sing, I watched my dad be involved, everybody else in my family be involved. My grandpa was the preacher, but I didn't pursue it. I didn't want to. The devil took that from me at a, as a baby, and that was my identity even until I was 20 years old. So for 20 years, I listened to the devil saying, you will never have that relationship. You will never receive the Father's love. But I'm standing here today receiving the Father's love at a level that I've never received. I'm standing here today because three years ago I made the decision that you are real, that you did save me. The loss of identity that I struggled with put me into perversion, put me into sexual immorality. I was addicted to drugs. I would wake up every morning smoke, come home from work and smoke every day for two years. That was my life because I didn't think that there was anything else for me. But I'm standing here today delivered and free because he did it in me. Because I came to the point in my life where I was at rock bottom and I couldn't save myself. The only one that could save me was Jesus. The only one that could give me that father's love was God. So now I have the best relationship with my stepfather that I've ever had in my life. Now I have the best church family that I've ever had in my life. Now I walk with God closer than I ever have before because I made the decision to not give up, to not let the enemy take my life. So that is my story. I encourage you to recognize your story and to share your story. Jesus is so good. Come on. Isn't Jesus just so good? People need to hear what Jesus has done in your life and what he's doing in your world. People need to hear it. I'm going to echo what Faith said. 
make it a point to share your story with somebody this week who does not know your story. Who knows what door that will open. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb. And I'm going to paraphrase by sharing our story, the word of our testimony. Amen. Hey, I want you guys to take a moment and check out this video. It's a recap from our team at the LA Dream Center and just some of the ministry that Jesus is doing through our church. Amen. Hey, this just goes to show that sometimes ministry is just having fun with people, building relationships with people. Sometimes we lay hands on people and we pray for them, which they did do a lot of that on that trip as well. But sometimes it's just playing football with somebody or playing basketball or dancing in the kitchen and serving food to somebody. Amen. Uh, we're going to transition just for a moment into money talk, and then we're going to invite pastor to come up and we're dig into the word today, but I want to say coming off of this LA mission trip, I didn't go, but I have heard story after story after story from our team, and this is what our money goes to when we give. It, it goes to being a kingdom builder. This is the kind of stuff that it's in our heart to be doing for our community here in Hunt County, and uh, our team is behind the scenes working fervently right now, figuring out how can we adopt a block here in Hunt County, how can we do kids ministry out in the streets for our neighborhoods in Hunt County, so we're working towards that, but it does cost money, and hey, we count the cost, and we don't... We don't live in fear of the cost. We know God's going to provide. This isn't a moment to beg for your money, but I just want to say your giving is producing fruit in the community, and it's building the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes that's in the church walls, and a lot of times it's out of the church walls. So thank you for being generous givers. We're not going to spend a long time on money talk. The, the, what the Lord put on my heart for us today is to share with you that we don't give out of duty, but we give out of devotion. You know, if we tithe out of just fear and duty and because we have to, if we give because we're just afraid we're going to be struck by lightning if we don't, that's really the wrong motive to give. We tithe out of a desire because God has blessed us and it gives us the example in the word and we say, hey, 10% is the least I can do for the blessing of the Lord on my life. The Bible says that he will rebuke, God will rebuke the devourer for our sake. He will open up the windows of heaven for us. But we give, we tithe out of devotion to the Lord. We give beyond our tithe out of devotion to the Lord. We bless people out in the community out of devotion to the Lord. We sow seed out of devotion to the Lord. I just want to break it off of us today. If you feel like it's a legalistic thing and you have to tithe or you're going to hell, 
got check or cash or money order for those of you who are like really organized in your budget and you do money orders hey, if you're new here I want to welcome you my name is Lindsay that was my beautiful wife Jody and we're the lead campus pastors at this location we've got different locations our main campus is in Rawlett Texas and uh, we're Apostle Barney and Pastor Cindy, our senior leaders, pastor, and their focus is we have one in Garland, and then we have one up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And uh, we're in the process of getting one started in Tampa with Pastor Dakota and Ingrid, who are now at Lakeview, getting poured into and getting training for planting in Tampa. In case some of you are wondering, what's going on with them? I still see them here. Why aren't they in Tampa? They're in training mode right now. They're in preparation mode. And so when you see them, love on them and encourage them. I'm very proud of Dakota and Ingrid. It's good to be back. My wife and I went on a family vacation, not just with our family, like immediately. We have two boys, but we went with our entire family. We went with my parents and my brothers and their wives and their kids and went down to Florida and uh, had a good time. It's good to be back, though. And uh, Josh was telling me how somebody gave his life to the Lord last Sunday, and last Sunday service was amazing. So, Josh, thanks for thanks for filling in, bringing the word. And uh, how Thursday night go? I tuned in a little bit, but I was on I was on vacation. So, was it good? Yeah. I tuned in and saw Amy up preaching. Where you at, Amy? You in the house right there in the front row? So that's awesome. How many of you guys enjoyed Thursday night hearing the OSM student stories? And that's cool. You know, something God's doing here at Caddo is just breaking off religion and to where we're, we're, we're comfortable sharing our story and we're unashamed about the blood of Jesus who set us free. And that's the whole point of sharing our story is to let people know that God, since he did it for me, he can do it for you. And there's no shame in this. Jabria, is that you? What are you doing, Jabria? You ain't supposed to be here. What's up, girl? How you doing? You doing? I feel like we're going old school. I'm like talking to people one-on-one -on -one from the mic. 
You ever been, you're, anybody been raised in church? Let me see your hand. And they're like, hey, brother, come on up and greet the people. You ever seen that? You know, come on up and greet the people. I won't do that to you, Jabri, but it's good to see you, though. It's really good to see you. Um, we have 12 values here at our church that make up the value, that make up the value, make up the culture of, of our church. Somebody say culture. And culture is either created or it's allowed. You either create culture or you just allow culture. And believe it or not, you have a culture. Your family has a culture. Your house has a culture. It could be a healthy culture. It could be an unhealthy culture. Uh, but nonetheless, you have, you have a culture. And we have 12 values that make up a healthy culture here that are biblical values that we, that we contend for. You know, you have to contend for culture, especially now, these days. I mean, you've always had to contend for culture. But with how, how prevalent darkness is and it's invading and it's very sneaky. Darkness is very sneaky. And you have to fight for culture now. And it's easy to get laxed and get lazy and allow an unhealthy culture to start breeding into your family, breeding into your marriage, into your children. And so you really have to be on guard. Your discernment has to be on high, high alert. And in order for that to happen, you have to die to self daily. There has to be a lot of dying going on. You need to kill yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need to, you need to die to self. And uh, we're going over values. We're just taking a moment, every one of our services, to hit a value. Because we want to let you know the kind of culture that you're a part of and that you walked into today. And uh, there's a value card. It should be one in one of the seats in front of you. I encourage you to take it home and, and check, out, check out these values. And if you don't know what your values are for your family, I would highly encourage you. To, to create values for your family. And you can just steal however many one of these that you want because we stole them from the Bible. So, and God gave them to us, so I guess we're not really stealing. But the value that we're, that we're hitting on this month is honor and humility. And just happens to be, we're gonna talk about honor in a specific way today. I, I didn't plan to segue these together, but uh, God showed this to me earlier. But everybody say honor and humility. And honor, honor goes, it goes up to those above you, your leaders. It goes down to those that you oversee, and then it goes across to your peers. It's up, down, all around. That's what that means. Honor. And then humility. Humility is the way for breakthrough. Humility opens doors for you. Humility says, says I'm sorry, even, even when your flesh doesn't want to. Humility is what invites the presence of God into the room. He resists the prideful. He gives grace to the gives grace to the, right? So it's really important that we understand kingdom values. Really, these, this isn't just Oasis values. These are kingdom values. This is kingdom protocol right here. So it's, it's, this, this is kingdom protocol. Like if you, if you live by this, your life will thrive and people will wonder what is going on? How are you so successful? What has happened? So I would encourage you to take these values home and look at them and talk about them with your spouse and your family, and, and you guys create values for your own house. So honor and humility, and it's one of those things that we have to practice. We have to put into practice. You know you have to practice the word. I like to play golf. Anybody like to play sports at all? Anybody really have to try to get good at something? You got guys like Pastor Caleb who, who woke up, he was birthed out of his mother's womb and was like playing basketball and hitting golf balls. And it's just, you have those people out there that it's really easy to get jealous of. They're just very naturally athletic and their ability is just ridiculous. It's just, it's unfair is what it is. It's just not right. And then you have little guys like me who have to like manipulate situations to get my way, to sneak my way in. You know, you kind of have to cheat a little bit to like somehow even get close to winning. You're not gonna win, but at least like, let's kind of narrow that thing down a little bit. You know, like when you play golf, let's do the foot wedge, you know, kind of kick the ball over a little bit, you know, kind of help yourself out. So it's like, you, you gotta figure out a way to at least kind of bring that in a little bit. So, but no, what was I even talking about? Huh? practice. You got to practice. Yeah, of course. You got to practice values. That's what you have to do. You got to practice values. So it's really important, man. You got to put this stuff into practice. You're not just going to wake up every morning naturally thinking of like, I'm going to honor everybody and walk in humility everywhere. You have to be intentional. Somebody say intentional. You don't wake up every morning feeling like you're on cloud nine and 
I'm anointed by God, and here I am. You have to be very intentional about what you do, what you say, how you say it, and there's consistency that has to follow. Anybody can do good for a month. Anybody can do good for 21 days. Anybody can do good for three months. It's that consistency. You want to know the key to promotion in the kingdom is consistency and heart. You can be consistent, but your heart not be in it, and you'll be miserable. But if your heart's in it, be, the, the way your heart gets in it is you understand the why. When you understand the why, it's a lot easier. And honestly, there's a deeper why than the why. Let me explain to you the deeper why. You ready for this? The deeper why is because God says so. Okay, that's all I need. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't have to know everything, but if God is in it and I trust his love for me, then I know it's for my good. And when I can trust God at that level, life goes a lot easier. I don't find myself in three, you know, seasons of three months or six months where I'm like struggling to, why God? Why? Why do you want me to do that? Why do you want me to give that? God, why do you want me to do this? God, why do you want me to, no, you just said so. Done deal. And we, when we can get to that level of trust with the Lord, I'm telling you, you will walk, you will walk in such peace. You will walk at a, a, at a level of life that is so freeing and people will look at you and say, you look like you have no worries. And you'll say, you're right, because I don't. I have no worries. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Savannah, for making me sound a lot more spiritual. I appreciate that. Really good. You can, you can have a seat. Um, man, I'm really proud of the desperation and the hunger that's in the room. I know God's been speaking to us about desperation, and I'm very proud. I'm very proud of you as your pastor to come back from a trip and to see the hunger and the desperation and the elevation that's in the house. And uh, God responds to that. He responds to that. But one Sunday out of the year, or a few Sundays out of the year, is not what God's looking for. He's looking for consistency. What God desires and desperation looks different. You can totally be steel and be desperate in your heart. There's times where I'll jump and dance and sing, and then there's times if I do that, it'll actually distract me. So it's it's not it's not about the outward, it's about the inward. And it's about what Holy Spirit is doing to provoke you. He may provoke you to your knees while there's a Jericho march going around, for those of you who've been in church any length of time. You know what a Jericho march is? I was raised in church my whole life, so... I've seen all kinds of stuff. I've been, I, haven't, I haven't just been raised in church. I've been raised in Pentecostal church. Not like, not like no makeup and all that kind of Pentecost. I'm talking about like Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, where we got labels, holy rollers, that whole thing. Glory cloths. Y'all know what glory cloths are? We use them here. You can call them, or you, you can call them plumber cloths. Whatever you got to do. It just, it just basically what it is, it just covers flesh. That's, that's what it covers. It covers the fleshly glory, you know? We had a lady one time at my dad's church growing up, rolled so much, her skirt started falling off. Yeah, you're like, we don't want to see that. That's not, that's not why we came to church. We didn't, we didn't come to see that. I want to talk to you, though, about a very key thing that will keep us consistent. It will keep us consistent as a body, but it will keep you consistent at home. It will keep you consistent as an individual. It will keep your marriage consistent if both husband and wife are doing this together. Separate, but you're, you have the same mission. You have the same focus. You know, it's important for a, for a, for a husband and a wife to understand where God's taking, taking you. It's very, it's very difficult. You won't reach your destination if you have two different visions for your marriage. If one is about the call of God and the other is not about the call of God, both both have to say yes if you want to reach that destination. It's really important. I'm not here to talk about marriage today. However, it's vital. But I want to talk to you for the next few moments about the fear of the Lord. 
the fear of the Lord. And I want to show you in the scriptures what the Bible says about the fear of the Lord. One of the things that is lacking in America today is the fear of the Lord. And I want to show you how far we have fallen from the fear of the Lord. I want to show you how serious this is. And I want you to allow Holy Spirit to just bring you in. Just open up your spirit right now and just say, Holy Spirit, bring me in. Bring me in. God wants to bring you in to raise you up. Holy Spirit brings us in. What does that mean, bring me in? That means you get brought into this place of rest and comfort and peace. You get brought into a deeper relationship with the Lord. You know, in the Old Testament, you have the outer courts, the inner courts, and the Holy of Holies. And God's inviting every single one of us into the Holy of Holies. But some of you may be in the outer courts right now. Some of you may be in the inner courts, and some of you may be in the Holy of Holies. So God wants to bring everybody in to this holy place. You have to let the Holy Spirit bring you in. But, it, but the, the more you go, the more you go in, the less you have to die. I mean, the more you have to die. The more you go in, the more you have to die. The less baggage you can carry with you, the less unforgiveness and offense and bitterness, the less sin you, you, you can carry with you. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart, right? So, so my wife and I were watching this. Um, it was either is is one of, one of two things. I think it was the other. There's there's this Mount Everest thing we were watching, but then there's this other one that we were watching. Uh, at least I was watching. She might have fallen asleep. It's another mountain that these guys were climbing, and the higher they went, the less weight they could carry with them. They got to a certain point, but they had to carry all this weight until a certain point. But it may have been in order to go higher, they had to strip off more of this weight. So it's really important to understand that many, many people, many people, I believe, will make it to heaven because they love the Lord. They're saved. They love God. I'm not the judge. I think we'll be surprised when we make it to heaven and we see the people who are there that we thought weren't going to be there. And I think we're going to expect people to be there that never made it. So it's, I, I think many people will make it to heaven. I think God's grace and mercy is a lot bigger than we can understand or fathom. Um. But we're going to get there, and I have a feeling that we're going we're gonna to get shown like a reel of everything we missed out on if we didn't allow Holy Spirit to bring us in. And I have this feeling there's going to be great joy, but also great regret. It's not going to keep you out of heaven, but it's like what Paul says. You'll build a house, and there's a day coming where fire will consume everything that was man-made. And only that remaining was God made. And the Bible says, Paul says, the builder will be saved, but barely escaping the flames. So I think many people will make it. They love the Lord. But I think many people are driven by, by soulish desires, not, not the spirit of God desires. I think many people are driven by what they see, not what they sense in their spirit. And because they're so full in their soul of, of selfish, fleshly desires, they're not, they're not targeting what God's actually called them to do. And you know, a soulish desire can sound very spiritual, but it doesn't mean that it is spiritual. And if you really want to know God's call for your life, you have to get flesh out of the way. And getting flesh out of the way, getting flesh out of the way, one of, one of the fastest ways to get flesh out of the way that I know of is fasting. That's one of the fastest ways. Fasting is one of the fastest ways to get in tune with the Holy Spirit. If you want to get in tune with the Holy Spirit, fast food. Fast food, fast TV, fast secular movies, fast social media, fast secular music, and you'll get in tune with the Holy Ghost so quick. Matter of fact, for some, what will happen, you'll realize how much flesh has actually been in the way. And it, it, may, it may take a week or two weeks to get flesh out of the way. Attitudes are going to rise up, and Holy Spirit's going to check you. Hey, that's wrong. You're going to say, well, you got to take it out of me, God, because I can't get this out of me. And he'll take it out of you. But God's wanting to bring us all into this place of holy of holies. But there's a, there's a very, very important key element that it's very vital. If you don't do this, if you don't do this thing, you won't get there. Now, there's, I'm sure, others, but I want to talk about the fear of the Lord. If you're lacking in the fear of the Lord, you won't make it into the holy of holies. You, you just won't make it there. Because Jesus had his 12, he sent out 72, but he brought three with him into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. 
not even the 12. He didn't invite all 12 with him. He only invited three with him. Are you one of the three? See, you have the outer court, you have the inner court, and you have the Holy of Holies. You have the crowds that gathered and showed up, and Jesus fed them one day, and then a, t- a, t- a day later, he said, you only showed it because I fed you yesterday. Some people come to church only to get what, what they want from God. That's outer court. They, they, they come and say, God bless me. God bless me with this. God, I, I want you to bless me with that. God, I want you to bless me with this. Then you, ha- then you have the inner court. Then you have the inner court. You've got, you've got the 12 disciples. You've got the 72. You've got the inner court. They love the Lord. God's using them. God's sending them out to preach. God's sending them out to heal. God's sending them out. But then you have the three. You've got the Holy of Holies where Jesus says, hey, come with me and pray. Come with me and get away. Come with me and hang out. Hey, come, hey, Jesus, I want to follow you. Okay, I just want to let you know that, that the birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Are you okay with sleeping on the ground? Yeah, as long as I'm with you, I'm okay sleeping anywhere. I don't have to have a fancy hotel or a nice bed. As long as I'm with you, I'm okay. As long as I know that I'm right next to you, it doesn't matter what you call me to do. As long as I know. See, that's the Holy of Holies talking. As long as I know. As long as I know. As long as I know it's you, I'm good. Outer court, they show up. Hey, I want some more food today. How else can you bless me today, Jesus? The outer courts, they go into prayer. They go into prayer. Remember, they love Jesus, but there's, but there's a lot of flesh there. There's a lot of lack of revelation there. There's, there's still a lot of dying to self that needs to happen. They go, they, they go to Jesus with a checklist. Hey, Jesus, I need you to heal my grandma. Hey, Jesus, you know I got a bill coming up. Hey, Jesus, you know this. Hey, Jesus, I really need help here. Hey, Jesus. And, and they, they say their checklist to Jesus, and then, and then they walk away. And then you have the inner court. And they know how to worship. They know how to praise. They know how to dance. They know how to shout. They know how to say amen. They love the Lord. They tithe faithfully. Outer courts don't tithe faithfully. Outer courts they'll give here and there. They love God. They're just not consistent. Inner courts, though, they're consistent. They're there. They're faithful. God's using them. But they, but, they, but they struggle to go into this place of full surrender. They struggle to, like, set time aside and actually do things now to make room for revival when it shows up. And then you have the Holy of Holies where Jesus says, I want you three to come. Now, what's amazing about this story is that the three who did come fell asleep. So it's not about perfection. Amen? Thank God it's not about perfection. So what is this about? It's about surrender. It's about heart. It's about whatever you want from me. You want all my money? Take it. You're more valuable to me than that. You want me to quit my job and go into full-time ministry? Sure. Just, just lead me. Just, just show me what I need to do. I'll do it. But even then, he may not show you. He may just incline you. You know what that means? You don't know. You just feel inclined to quit your job. What are you going to do next? I don't know. I'm just, I'm going one step at a time. Hey, give everything you have. Okay, how am I going to make my bills? Trust me. Okay. Sure. You're along for the journey. You're, you're along for the ride. You're just here. You have no plan B. Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you can have no part of me. And the crowd, ready? The crowd, outer court, that offends me. You talking about cannibalism here, Jesus? The outer courts get easily offended. That's why there's a rotating door in churches. Outer court. They want to find that one church that just makes them feel so good. They want to find find that, that one church that just 
tells them how much God wants to bless them every service. The crowd leaves, and then he turns to his disciples. Now think about this. He says, this is how confident Jesus was. Okay, just, just think about that. This is how bold, how secure, and how confident Jesus was in the Father. He said, are you going to leave me? He puts pressure on his own disciples. That'd be like everybody in the church leaving me and my wife, and then I go to my staff and say, you guys rolling out too? You guys going to roll too? Because if you are, that's fine. Me and God are good. He's, gonna, he's, he's got me. He was so secure. And, but his disciples said, we have nowhere else to go. It's like, it's like Elisha and Elijah. How many of you guys know that story? Elisha goes and appoints Elijah as the next prophet. And what does Elijah do? He goes home and he burns the plow, kills his animals, so he had nothing to return to. One of the easiest ways to have no plan B is to kill your plan B. To where you cannot say, well, if God doesn't come through, then I will just. God wants to bring you to a place where you can only say, God, if you don't come through, we won't survive. That's where God wants you. Can you live in that spot? That's where the Holy of Holies is. Can you live there? Will you allow Holy Spirit to bring you into that place? See, it's a different level of living. There's a different, there's a different cost to come into this place. There's a different cost. You can go to McDonald's right now, and your stomach will be full, but the cost is going to be less than if you were to go to Sawgrass and get a good steak. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer for your food, but it's not going to give you the runs. Many people want instant gratification with the Lord. But they still have the runs. They still, they still run from God. They get what they need and they run. It cost them a little bit, a little gas money to get here. Maybe, maybe they put a tip in the offering. So are you an outer court? Are you an inner court? Are you a holy of holies person? Are you, a, are you a part of the crowd? Are you one of his disciples? Are you one of the three that Jesus says, hey, I know you're not perfect, but come with me. I can trust you to this degree. Now, notice who Jesus did not take with him to the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, the one who wound up stabbing him in the back, Judas. The one who is greedy. If you're greedy, you don't, you don't make it. If you're selfish, you don't make it. If you don't want to give up your desires, you won't make it into the Holy of Holies. You may make it to heaven, but you won't make it in the Holy of Holies on this side of eternity. See, Hebrews 4 talks about this place. It's the place of rest. It's the place of trust. And in order to be consistent in it, there are two key ingredients. There are two key ingredients here that you have to have. You have to have them, and you have to be intentional. Remember earlier we talked about practice. You have to be intentional with these things. I'm, I'm not good enough to remind myself. Holy Spirit has to remind me. I want you to go with me to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We're going to go there, and then... And then we're going to go somewhere else. Where? I'm not sure because I got different verses. 1 John chapter 4. This is the key to walk in the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is simply honor and respect and reverence for God. 
This is not a fear where you're afraid of God, like in the sense of dealing with the spirit of fear, right? We know, we know it's not that fear because the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So this is not a spirit of fear where you're afraid to go and approach God. The Bible actually says the complete opposite. Now that Jesus has made a way, you can come boldly and confidently before the throne of grace, make your petitions known, right? James says, hey, if you need wisdom, ask God for it. Man, he'll give you, he'll give you wisdom, but do not waver in doubt. Don't, don't, be, don't be undivided in your loyalty to God. One, one day you're living for the world, the next day you're living for God. One week you're about Jesus, the next week you're about sports or something else or whatever. You, there has to be a consistency in your life. Somebody say consistency. There has to be a consistency, and if you'll let Holy Spirit bring you in, he will. I can't bring you there. Your spouse can't bring you there. Uh, nobody can bring you there but the Holy Spirit as you yield. This is the key right here. You have to yield. A preacher, a preacher on TBN, your favorite preacher in the world, of course, besides me, you're, you're, I'm kidding, but your, your, your favorite worship team can't bring you there. Your favorite worship team can't bring you there. I know how much you love Pastor Edwin and Zoe, but they can't get you there. I, I, know, I know you love to listen to them sing and do their back and forth, what they did earlier. I, I get it. It's great. It's anointed. It's amazing. But they can't get you there. They can't. You know, sometimes actually when I'm at home and I'm, I'm hanging out with the Lord, sometimes actually lyrics distract me from what God's trying to bring me into. I've got to put on, I've got to put on Christian music without lyrics. I got to put on the Chick-fil-A piano. I'm kidding. That would actually distract me. I would want like an ice cream cone listening to that. I'd be like, where's my, where, where's my son's kid's toy? I'm going to go exchange it for an ice cream cone. I'd be flipping couches over trying to find an ice cream cone. Where is that at? Or the toy to get the ice cream cone. I can tell who has kids and who doesn't. When you go to Chick-fil-A and you get a kid's meal and it comes with a toy, do we know this? Just didn't find it funny? Okay, all right. That's fine. That's fine if you didn't find it funny. That's okay. That's all right. I just want to make sure we're on the same playing field here. That's all. I get it. I, God didn't make me a comedian for a reason. It's okay. First John chapter 4. I want you to watch this. Verse 16. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in his love. God is love. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. Here's the key. Trusting the Father's love for you. Don't, don't miss this. This is so important. One of the main things I think the devil tries to convince people of is that God is 99% good and 1% bad. I'll just put it this way. There's a, there's a lot of good in God, but there's also a part of God that's bad. God's good, but, but also why did he allow this to happen? I mean, I, I, I get God is good and God's sovereign and, you know, he can do what he wants, but then why did he allow, why, why did he allow so-and-so to die of cancer? I, I don't understand that. I get, I get God is good, but then why did he allow me to be molested when I was a child? I, I don't, I, I, get it, I get he sent his son Jesus to save me. I'm grateful, but I'm also a little jaded at the fact that he didn't stop it when I cried out to him and so, told him, hey, God, if you're real, please stop this. If God's so good, then why, why did he allow, why did he allow, you know, somebody to die that I was close to? Why, why did he allow, if God's so good, I mean, I get, I get he's good, but there's a part of, there's a part of me that I'm just kind of convinced there's, He's just not 100% good. And as long as there's even a 0.1% of you that is convinced that God is, no, as long as there is, as long as you think there's a 0.1% in God that is bad, that is an open door for the enemy to come in and bring doubt into your life. 
You'll catch yourself praying, and oh man, Holy Spirit's bringing me in, and the enemy will trigger a thought of something that happened a long time ago, and it will stop you right in your tracks from allowing Holy Spirit to bring, well, I don't, I don't know that I fully, I don't know about this. And God's like cheering you on, no, no, come on, let my spirit bring you in. Trust me, trust me. But the Bible says we, we can trust his love for us. No, it actually says, that says we have put our trust in his love. Can and put are two, believe it or not, completely different things. I can trust your love. No, I have put my, I have put my trust. I can't, I can't, no, I have. I can go work out. No, I have worked out today. Two completely different things. Tell yourself that every day. I want to get in shape. I can work out today. I can work out today. I can't. But if you actually don't go and work out, guess what? You're still out of shape. Oh, I can trust his love. Oh, yeah, but have you? Okay, what point in your life have you, like you, I have put, and maybe you don't remember exactly, but do you, can you confidently say I have 100%, I have put my trust in God because God is love. So it's not, it's not just like there's a piece of God that is love. He is completely love. And the Bible says there is no darkness. There is no darkness in God. There, he casts no shadow. He casts, there's no shadow in heaven. Everything's exposed. He is light. He created the sun. Man, I got burnt this week. I'm the guy that doesn't put any sunscreen on. That's me. I want to get tan, and then I overdo it. You know, you're laying there like, I don't feel like I'm getting tan at all until like at two hours later, you're like, I look white, but I can tell my body's burning. You know, like, <laughs> like and, then, and then by like night, it's like, I think somebody made the comment, my son or one, one of my nieces, like, you look, you look like a lobster. It's like, okay. <laughs> Very true. I, I, could not, I couldn't argue with him on that one, 100%. He, he created that sun, and it's so bright and so hot. So imagine how bright he is. You can't look at the sun without it hurting your eyes. You can't look at God without it blinding you. You either trust in his love, and you've put your trust in his love 100%. Or you haven't, and that doesn't mean at all, but it means, I mean, it could be people who just completely don't, but maybe there's a percentage where the enemy's convinced you, ah, he's not 100% good, though. Where are you going with this, Lindsay? I'm, I'm going, in order to fear the Lord, in, in order to fear God, and in, in order to, to get brought into this holy of holy place, to where you are just completely sold out for him to where anything he asks of you, you say yes to, to where you don't have to know all the whys and the ins and outs and the hows and all, and, 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 order, and all, you, all, you, all you need to know is as long as I'm with you, as long as you're with me, man, we're good. Now I get there's practical things in life, I understand that, but God, God, God will lead you. He leads you, he, he orders the steps of the righteous. There's times where he leads us, and we don't even know it's him leading us. There's times where I sense him leading me, and there's just times I don't sense him at all leading me, but it winded up looking back on it, that was the Lord leading me. Has that ever happened to you? I didn't feel the Holy Ghost at all in that, but looking back on it, that was completely the Lord. That was completely the Lord. In order to fear the Lord to the degree, to the degree that they did in the book of Acts, we have to trust his love. We have to put our trust in his love. And by putting our trust in the Father's love for you, that means that you put your trust completely in God because God is love. You're not putting your trust in one characteristic of God. God himself is love. Understand this. He is love. It's not just one little side piece over here, like on a shelf, and like that's one component of God. I, I, I understand, like, it, it, God, God, 
God brings wrath. God, God's the judge. Like, I, I, understand, I understand there's more characteristics to God, but, but the point here is this. You have to allow Holy Spirit to bring you in. If you want to live in this place of relationship with the Lord, if you want to be brought into this place of rest and peace and joy, then you have to fully trust God's love. You have to fully put your trust in his love. It, no, Listen, Peter, Peter was hung upside down. He was hung up. It doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you. In order for me to trust God's love and everything has to be perfect. No, then you don't trust God's love. That's not true faith. It doesn't, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean persecution won't come. Persecution 100% will come. You may get martyred for the, for the sake of Christ. That happened to a high school girl years ago in Colorado. Come on, that's not too far-fetched. But the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is what brings us into this place of holy of holies. The fear of the Lord is what brings you in. And I want to talk about the fear of the Lord, but I want to delay this foundation of in order to truly fear the Lord, you have to trust his love. Because fearing God means I say yes, sir, no matter the cost. But if you doubt that there's a little bit of evil in God or there's a little bit of hidden agenda in the Father that's against you or, or God's not 100% for you, then it's going to be very difficult for you to truly fear him. But if you can get to this place, and I know you can, if you allow Holy Spirit to bring you there, I know you can. If you allow him to bring you there, then, man, God will just make it known by his spirit that I can, I can completely, I, I put my trust in your love for me. Do you have a defining moment in your life? You said this moment, boom, I put my trust in his love. I had a revelation of God and his love for me, boom. I'm never gonna doubt him again. And if I do, I'm gonna be reminded of, no, I trust you. All things work together for good. What the enemy meant for evil, God flips it around for his good and for my good. God flips things around. All things work together for my good. All things work together for my good. Are you hearing this this morning? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. I want you to go with me now to the book of Acts. Book of Acts chapter 5. Here's an eye-opening story of how much I believe the disciples, the apostles, feared the Lord. And I want you to, I, I, I want you to see how far the church has fallen and what, what God's wanting to bring us back to and what God is bringing us back to, all right? This is not, this is not a uh, dis discouraging message of where the church is at, but in order to, in order to grow, in order to, to, to get healthy, you have to be real with where you are. Like if I broke my arm and went to the doctor and the doctor looked at me, oh, you're fine. But I got a bone sticking out of my arm and he just said I was fine because he didn't want to hurt my feelings, I would go find a different doctor. Are you with me? It's the same way in the church. In order for us to get healthier, we, ha we have to be honest with where we are. And, 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 and I just encourage you not to be the person who says, oh yeah, I already got that. Because if that's you, I'm telling you, you don't have this. That's pride talking. That means there's a lack of the fear of the Lord and God is potentially resisting you because he resists the prideful. But, but there needs to be this ever, ever increasing hunger and desire to want to grow this ever-increasing hunger and desire to say, God, I can't get myself there. You have to get me there. But I, I have to make room in my life for you to get me there. I can't fill my schedule with social media and work and family and X, Y, Z and all this other stuff and then expect God to get me there. That's not how it works. I'll die, I'll die, and they'll put me in a grave and they'll say, Lindsay, pastor to good church. That would be about the, he loved his wife, loved his kids, he pastored a good church. That would be about the extent of what they say. 
And I just want to tell you, God has more for me and he has more for you. Oh, she was a good godly woman. What does that mean? Oh, she went to church faithfully. Great. What did she do besides just go to church? Because there are a million people, millions of people going to church every week. Like, are you going to be a Stephen? Are you going to be an Esther? Like, who in the Bible has God placed on your heart of like, there's a spirit on them that I've put in you. And I want you now to allow me to bring you in to cultivate that spirit. To begin to possess you. You see the difference? You don't hear about any of the other deacons that got appointed over this food ministry. You hear about one. His name was Stephen. He was the first martyr in the book of Acts. The only time you hear about these other deacons is when they initially appointed them. That's it. That's great. But that, to be in a sense, speaks to inner court people. Stephen was a holy of holy guy. Oh, I'm, I'm good with just being used here and there, man. I got a lot going on in my life, so don't ask too much of me. Okay. Inner court. Maybe we should walk around with just name tags. Outer court. Okay. I know, I know, I, I know now like where you want to function at. Okay, that's fine. Inner court. Okay. That's cool. Let's bring you on the team. Holy of holy. I'm going to think twice before calling them because they're probably wrapped up in the presence of God somewhere. Actually, I'm going to think once and I'm going to call them because I know they'll be available. I know they'll say yes to anything. Oh, but pastor, you know, that's, that's pretty intense. I didn't write the word. There has to be this decision that you make as an individual with you and your relationship with the Lord to where how are you going to feel on judgment day? Because that's what it boils down to. My job is to be the vessel, but you're the one who's going to have to stand before him and, 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 and be held accountable for what you did and did not do based off of whatever excuses we're going to bring to the table and we're going to see if they work or not. I just don't believe that. Well, let's read this story because this, this is already after Jesus ascended. This isn't Old Testament. This story right here is already now Jesus has already went, and now you've got the apostles doing what the apostles do. And let's check this story out. But there was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. All right? Let's back up. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. Listen, the dude's not out cheating on his wife. He's not out, like, hooked on meth, sleeping with anybody he can get his hands on. He's not out killing people. He sold some property, and he only brought part of it to the church. He only brought part of it to the apostles. But he claimed it was the full amount. This is what he claimed. He claimed it was the full amount, but it was only part of the amount. It was partial payment. He said it was everything. So let's say they sold it for $100,000, and let's say he brought $50,000 to the church, and he said, it's everything. It's the complete amount of what we sold it for. That's all, that's, that's all he did, right? Not a big deal. I don't, I don't tie 10, 8%, 5 whatever. God says, give this amount. You know, God puts it on my heart to sow a seed here, but I'll give a part of that just because I like to have a cushion, you know. This would be like, this would be like somebody asking you, hey, do you tie? Oh, yeah, I tie. But really, you just tie like a few times a year. Partially, but then lying about it. So bottom line, 
take money out of the equation, Ananias lied. He lied in the presence of God. And, and, uh, and the word says, says this here in a minute. Watch this. All this was, now listen, all this was was a lie. It was just a lie. All this was was a lie. That's all it was. He didn't show up to the church saying, I'm going to kill you, Peter. Like, it wasn't like he made threat. He just lied. That's all he did. He just lied. Can you see how here in America, we've made like sex outside of marriage, alcoholism, drugs, homosexuality, transgenderism, you know, whatever, all on this one pedestal, but lying down here, you know, lusting in our heart right here, you know, hating people right here, unforgiveness right here. But man, thank God I'm not doing all of those things. It's just all kind of like right down here. It's just kind of all kind of hidden. It's all kind of right here. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know about partial payment here. My, my wife and I talked about it. We have the same story. We have the same story. It's not a big deal. We're not out like, we're not out like you know, uh, worshiping some like, you know, idol out here. We're just, you know, down here. I just want you to see how far in America we've fallen because right now there are some twisted things happening in this nation. And, and honestly, there's twisted things happening in pulpits. And, 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 and to be honest with you, like, there has to be an understanding of the Word of God. This is why God has been so hard-pressing on Oasis and Cato uh, specifically about getting in your Word because you have to know what the Word says. You're going to hear all kinds of people saying all kinds of stuff that's twisted and not accurate, not right, and it's going to sound good to your soul. It's going to sound good to your flesh. But if you're so consumed with the world, you're, 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 you're going to miss out on that discernment that the Holy Spirit says, no, that's not the word. But it sounds good, and it's easy. And, oh, oh they, they say not to tithe. And, oh, they say not to do this. And, oh, they say it's okay to, 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 be, to, 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 to live in sexual morality. And that's okay, though. And, and that, you, know, you can still be a Christian and still do this, 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 and this. And, and it's okay. God understands. And God loves everybody. And all of that grace stuff. Or, or you, you can come into what the Word says, and it's not legalism. It's not legalism. It's trusting God's love for you. It's understanding, like, God, you are love, but there is a day of judgment coming. And this is, this is not not Old Testament. This is not like Deuteronomy. This is not like when God opened up the earth and like people went in there. Or, you know what I mean? Like this isn't like that kind of Old Testament crazy stuff that we'd be like, what's going on? But this is New Testament. Jesus is already in heaven now. And you have one, we have, you have one marriage, one marriage who lied about money. All they did was lie about money. I just want to paint the picture to you. Because the enemy has lied to so many people in America now. It's not a big deal. You're making it a big deal. I'm not preaching at you. I'm just, I'm like really righteous in the nation right now. Just let me get it out. It's not a big deal. I love you. It's not a big deal. It's just calm down. Everybody needs to chill out. Sin's not a big deal now. I, I don't know that I can get down with the Bible now because of, you know, the Bible says this, but I mean, really in our culture and look at the laws of the land and I really like that. And I just don't want anybody to be mad at me now. And I want everybody to be on my team now. And I want everybody to like me. And I want to, I just don't want to get involved. It's too political. It's, it's, it's too much. No. What does the word say? Which side do you fall on? Are you going to leave me now? Culture says one thing, but kingdom culture says completely something different. What the Word of God does is it cuts a super precise cut it does not miss the word of god never misses never misses it cuts precisely spirit and soul the bible says the word when you look into it, it's like a mirror it's a reflection of all of our imperfections oh lord i've drifted away in this area forgive me bring me in holy spirit bring me in forgive me Forgive me for getting lazy. Forgive me, forgive me for getting lazy in my pursuit. Forgive me for thinking that's okay. That is so not okay. And there was a guy who came out of the lifestyle of homosexuality, and he said he looked through Scripture to find and justify homosexuality. He said, I could not find a single verse that backed it up. A guy living in that lifestyle, looking in the Word to justify it, he said, I couldn't find a single verse. All this guy did was lie. Just lied. Oh, it's not a big deal, Pastor. You know, we all do it. 
You know. No, I don't. I, I don't know. This is awkward. <laughs> You're making me feel uncomfortable right now. I, no, it's not integrous. You ever been in those conversations? Somebody tells a joke and you're like, uh, yeah, that, that actually grieves my spirit. <laughs> Let's change the conversation. <laughs> All right there. <laughs> All right. Awkward. <laughs> you ever been in those con? No? Hopefully you're not the one like starting that conversation. That'd be, that's a little weird. I'm up here, you're, you're there, and it's like, okay, it's a little weird. <laughs> Hopefully you're not the one like, like a lack of engagement here, you know, <laughs> just, you ever been there, somebody tells some dirty joke, and you're like, uh, that's not funny to me, uh, well, how are you doing, I know you've been hanging out for a couple hours, but thought I would ask you again, how are you doing, change the combo, it just gets awkward, You don't want to judge them. You want to love them. But what do you do? God forbid we're the ones starting those conversations. Oh, it's just a little dirty joke. It's not. It's not oh, it is a big. It, it's not funny. Okay, I feel convicted too. Ooh, thank you. All right, let's get back to the word. Okay. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. You know, it's funny. He was in agreement with his wife. He was unified with his wife, but not unified with God. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? A lot of people in the church seem to be unified with God, but then like disunified at home. <laughs> That's so crazy. Just thought I'd point that out. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? There was no laughter, so I didn't. I guess another bad joke. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let... Now watch this. All he did was lie. I mean, up until this point, he's a believer, right? Seems to be at least. I mean, what a good deed. Sell your profit, get partial payment to the church. But what was the issue? It wasn't the issue of partial payment. Look at this. Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Whoa. What, what, what did the word say about Judas. The word said about Judas that Satan filled his heart. And Judas was the guy who betrayed Jesus for money. And now we see the spirit of Judas on Ananias and Sapphira. How many Judases are in the church today? Can I tell you the spirit of Judas is rampant in the church? Oh, they, they know how to get their worship on, but yet they're hanging on to their money. Can I, can I just address this demon that I feel resistance on right now? Not you. I, I feel resistance from a demonic power right now. Let's me know I'm, I'm hitting exactly where I need to hit right now. You cannot love God and love money. You cannot serve God and serve money. You cannot be friends with the world and be friends with God. The Bible makes it very clear. You either serve God or you serve money. You either love God or you love the world. It is black and white. It is cut right down the middle. There is no such thing as mine and then this is the Lord's. It has to be this is all the Lord's or, or it's not. There is no partial thing here. There has to be an understanding today in our culture that everything I have belongs to him. My marriage is his. My children are his. My, 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 the, thing, the ministry he's called me to. What, what, you bought me. <laughs> I didn't buy you. You bought me. Use me how you want. I can go to the Walmart right now. I can buy anything I want in that Walmart and use it however I please because I bought it. Walmart has no, no decision on how I use a product that I got off that shelf. I can go buy me a boogie board right now in Walmart. 
Why I chose that? Probably just because it's fresh on my mind. I could go in there and buy a boogie board, and I could use that if I wanted to to try to cut up my food for lunch. I can use it however I want. I bought it. It's my money. He bought you. Those of you who claim to be a believer, his blood bought you. That means you no longer have a vote or a say-so on how he wants to use you. You've been bought. And if you still want to say so, then I question, have you really been bought? Not because of him not buying you, but because of your lack of surrender. God is looking for a church that fears him. Watch this. Not, 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 a, not a scary fear. Not I'm afraid of you. Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not to sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. There was no pressure on this couple for selling their property to begin with. There was no pressure on this couple that even if they did sell it, they didn't have to give a penny of it to the church. The issue is, is they lied about it. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. Every time somebody lies in the house of God, let's make one thing clear. You're not lying to a person, you're lying to the Lord. Every time you cheat somebody, every time somebody does wrong to somebody, they are ultimately doing wrong to the Lord. Watch what happens. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Doesn't say God killed him, but Satan was already in his heart. Maybe he had a heart attack. Maybe Satan caused Ananias to have a heart attack and just straight fell to the floor. When you open the door for the devil to come into your life, that's one thing like if you're addicted and you want to get help. That's a different story. It wasn't like he showed up and said, hey, listen, I'm really tempted to do this. I, I, I need help right now. What should I do, Peter? No, he intentionally showed up and said, here. It was, it was an intentional, blatant decision that him and his wife already conceived behind closed doors. They already had this conversation. They already knew what they were going to do. It was planned out. Somebody say planned out. planned out. It was a planned out event. Planned out. This is why Paul says those who indulge in sin but claim to be a Christian have nothing to do with them. If they indulge in sin but claim to be a believer, do not eat with them. Do not hang out with them. Have nothing to do with them because you're doing them no good by hanging out and you both claim to be brothers and sisters in Christ, but yet one's indulging in sin and the other one, when we hang out with people like that, what we're doing is we're actually, we're actually telling them the sin that you're doing is actually okay. Oh, we're all brothers and sisters. Oh, God's working on everybody. He is working on everybody. But some people, some people, God's resisting. He gives grace to the humble, but he resists those who indulge in sin, and they know they're indulging in sin, and they do not want to change. Those who indulge in sin, and they know they're indulging in sin, but they're addicted to sin and they need breakthrough and they desire breakthrough, God will give grace to those people. Do you see the difference? Now we're living in a day and age, everybody's welcome to join this most amazing community called the church. Whatever you're doing doesn't matter. Come on in, you're a brother and sister. Come on in. Oh, you raised your hand. Oh, and you're still sinning and you don't want to change. Oh, you're still a brother and sister. Come on in. Everybody's welcome. Bring everybody here. But what does the Bible say? A little yeast ruins the whole lump. Right. Parents, can I talk to you for a minute? If your kids are indulging in sin in your house, you have every right to get up in their business. Right. You have every right at the point of whatever that age is, 17, 18, I don't know the legal requirement, but you can kick them out if you need to. <gasps> That's not loving. Yeah, if they're breaking the rules 
and you're allowing sin to hang out in your house because you don't want to hurt their feelings, you can't be mad if you're going through warfare. You can't be mad if you're dealing with depression. You can't be mad at whatever you're willing to tolerate. We're just trying to love them in and all that. No. You kidding me? You know why I am the way I am today? Because my dad would not tolerate rebellion in his house. That's not my house. That was his house. His rules, his way. That's how it goes. God's rules, God's way. That's how it goes. It doesn't change. We're not smarter than God. We won't ever become smarter than God. We're not even more gracious than God. We're not more merciful than God. I'm telling you right now, God is way better at everything than we are. So who are we to change his law for the way of, we just want to accept everybody. Let's take his scripture and pervert it. Who do we think we are? We have little brains. All of us do. We're children. We're sons and daughters. We're not grown adults. We're his sons and daughters. We're not better than him. He is always better than us. Always. Always is he better. Always. Always, always, always. What does that do? It puts us in a position to always have to rely on him. Always have to look to him. Always have to go to him. His spirit is in us. Yes, but he is is our master. He is the best. Let Satan fill our heart and we think, We can outdo God like Satan did in heaven, and he got kicked out. Let's not forget Satan's beginnings. Pride filled his heart, and God kicked him out. Angels went with Satan. Let's not forget the beginning of Satan. He was in heaven. God created this beautiful masterpiece called Lucifer, this worshiper in heaven, and pride filled his heart. And God kicked him out. God has no problem kicking you and I out of heaven. He has no problem with saying, no, you cannot come here. What does Jesus say? Don't don't be worried about the one who can kill your flesh, but but be more concerned about the one who can destroy your soul. Who is he talking about? God. The fear of the Lord. God Almighty, Alpha, Omega, beginning, end, without him, we have no breath in our lungs. A lot of havoc in houses would be stopped if parents would grow a backbone with their children. Sorry, you're not bringing that in here. Live on the streets if you have to. I don't care. That's your decision. You want to live in rebellion? It's not coming in here. You want to disobey me? Get out. That's not happening here. I'm not saying it's an easy decision to make. But you have to either love God more or love your children to hell. All to try to be friends with them. When we should write a book called When Children, no, yeah, When When Children and Influence Them. One of my sons this morning, they're not in six. One of my sons this morning made this face at my wife. Like, mm, gotcha, mom. Oh, he did not get her. I was right there and saw it. And I put him in his place right there. And you could tell his face went from like smiling to, oh, shoot. We were driving one time when I was a kid. My oldest brother landed, snapped back at my mom. My dad pulled the van over, jumped out of his seat faster than lightning, went to the very back seat where my brother sat and got in his face and said, don't you ever disrespect my wife like that again. Guess what he's doing now? He's got an apostolic mantle on his life. He's preaching in Wisconsin. People think, oh, you're going to damage him. No, it actually raised a child in the way they should go. Look at the fruit of people's, of people's children. Look at, look at those who are stern and live their life according to the word. Look at where those kids are. Look at parents who didn't want to. Look at the parents who, 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 who wanted to be friends with their kids. And just wanted to be buddy-buddy with them, wanted to live their life through them, didn't want their kids upset with them. And let's see the fruit difference. Let's see the difference. The Bible says, wait, raise the child in the way they should go, not the way that I think they should go, but a way the word of God says they should go. It's important. If you got kids like that are young right now, and you're just letting your kids do their thing, and you're buying in this whole woke culture world of like they have their own prophecy. 
My kids have zero privacy. Zero. Absolutely zero privacy. And as long as they live in my house, they will have absolutely zero privacy. I don't believe in zero privacy. I sowed the seed in this woman. She, she, she birthed them on out. They are our kids. They were, we were here before they were. They have, they have no privacy. No privacy at all. Are you hearing this? Yeah. It's not legalism. It's called, I'm their dad, and I'm held accountable for the decisions that they make right now in this life. I've, I've, got, I've got to influence them now before this woke agenda gets in their ear as it's already been trying to get into their ear. So important right now. If you want to have kids, listen to this. This is so important. This isn't crazy. It's the word. Paul says that people think we're crazy. It's for the glory. People are going to think you're crazy, man. But I'm telling you, there's going to be more pressure on you being 50-50 than you just diving on in and letting God have your back. You're going to feel tug of war going on. Well, you know, CNN says this, Fox News says that. Fox News has let uh, 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 Caitlyn Jenner come on. I wish I knew the guy's real name. Bruce. He's not Caitlyn. He's Bruce. That's not who God made him to be. Call people by how God made them. I don't want to offend them. That's not who they are. You can go up to a dog and call it a cat. Come here, meow, meow. You're sowing seed. When I encounter people who are in that homosexual lifestyle, I'll say, hey, man, how you doing? I don't say, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. You're a man. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Got to be intentional. Got to be so intentional. This is so important. I say, I don't have kids. How does this apply to me? Just enjoy it. <laughs> and one way, thank God you don't have kids. It's kind of easier. I'm telling you, my dad to this day, I got the fear of the Lord in my life for my dad. He still scares me. Like in a good way. Like there, there has to be that honor and respect. Carry yourself the way you want people to respect you. You got to carry yourself a certain way. You're not doing any child any good. Trying to be buddy-buddy with them. Letting them live in your house while they're indulging in sin. But they're not a Christian yet. We're just letting them make their own. I don't care. Drag their butt to church. You heard Faith's story. She got dragged to church. She hung out. I got dragged to church. I was a rebellious teenager, and my parents were the pastors. I was an idiot growing up. I was a hypocrite. I was the guitar player on Sundays, and I was a youth leader, and then I was out doing stupid things with people. Just God didn't give up on me. That seed was so. I told my mom one time, I said, Mom, I'm done being a Christian. I was like 15. Maybe younger. My dad was out of town in South Africa on a mission trip. And I told my mom, I'm done being a Christian. And uh, she went to her room. No joke. She buckled to her knees. Started crying. <laughs> she called my dad. Lindsay said he's done being a Christian. Oh, he's done being a Christian. Oh, it's my fault. Oh. My mom's the type. She would take things personal. I raised you wrong. What did I do? Where did I go wrong? You know what my dad said? And this has stuck with me. And it's helped me raising our kids. And they're young right now. I can only imagine their teenage years, which they'll just be pure as all get out. My dad told my mom so confidently, babe, he's got a call of God on his life. Don't you worry about it. He was like, oh, my God, what happened? Tell me every detail. We need to pray right now. We need to fast. Nope, he's got a call. He's good. In other words, we're raising him right. And the word of God says when he gets older, he will not depart from it. So who do you want to believe? A punk teenager who said he's done being a Christian or the word of God which outlasts him? Make your decision on where you put your trust. Make up your mind. This is where I put my trust. I put my trust in his love for me. Now watch this. The wife shows up in verse 5. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. 
Then some young men got up. It's as almost as if like this happened regularly. Like the young men are there hanging out and, oh, there's another one. Let's go pick him up. Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet and took him out and buried him. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> is there a cemetery nearby? Or they just bury him anywhere? I'd like to know more of the details of this story. About three hours later, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. They didn't have cell phones back then, you know? She's not trying to get a hold of him through a cell phone. She, she just shows up. Peter asked her, now watch this. Peter asked her, was the price you and your husband received, uh, was this the price you and your husband received for the land? Yes, she replied, that was the price. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? You are, you are, you are calling for war with the spirit of God. How could you do this? Oh, it's just a lie though, pastor. Not a big deal. It's just a, just a lie. The young men who buried your husband <laughs> are just outside the door and they will carry you out too. She's like, wait a minute, what? Boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the next verse says, the next verse says, instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in <laughs> and saw she was dead, I'm glad we can get laughter out of this like very serious story. When they saw she was dead, they carried her out. <laughs> oh, there's another. Oh man, his wife. Ah, let's go guys, wrap her up. I doubt that's how it happened, but the comedic side of me went there. When the young men saw, came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. What's the point of this? Why, why would God allow two people to die over lying? Lying. It wasn't Sodom and Gomorrah. I would understand Sodom and Gomorrah a lot easier. Like if the churches were just having orgies and living in all kinds of different lifestyles, that would make more sense. Where's the grace, Lord? What's God saying? He's saying, I'm making a point here. In order for you to walk in the supernatural at a high level, you must fear the spirit of the Lord. In order to host my presence well, and in order for me to come and hang out with you, and inhabit myself in your house, in your marriage, amongst your children, in the church collectively, you have to fear me. There has to be a reverence and a respect for me and for my spirit to where you don't just walk around thinking you're getting away with anything. There is no getting away with anything with the Lord. And I just wonder right now, if there was an Ananias and Sapphira here in this house, and that happened today, how would that make you and I respond to the Lord? I say this not from a place of hate or a place of, like, disgustingness, but I just wonder if we need more of these stories happening now. Can I tell you, there were two things that moved the church into fearing the Lord that I know of. And it was this right here where God said, I am not playing games. You came, you showed up, you didn't have to lie, but you lied. And you lied against God and you tested the spirit of the Lord. And then boom, and the Bible says, fear gripped the church, gripped the church. You keep reading, the Bible says people didn't even want to join the church. They were afraid to even say yes to that community. You know what that did? It caused people to think twice before they said, yes, I'm a Christian. Can I tell you one of the biggest, if not the most important things we need in this nation in Hunt County and this house right now is the fear of the Lord to cause people to second guess. I mean, am I a Christian? Because I don't want to say yes and then drop dead. I need to know my heart is all in. I need to know I am all about this thing. The second thing that I see in the book of Acts is persecution. Persecution. Saul kills people, becomes Paul. The Bible says that when he was away, when he was away, he was blinded for, I think, three days. He was blinded. He ate nothing. He drank nothing. He has an encounter with the Lord. God blinds him. He eats nothing. He drinks nothing. And the Bible says that God showed him what he must suffer for his namesake. There is a cost to hosting the presence of God. There is a cost. 
It cannot be being lazy coming up in the house of God, which indicates we're lazy at home. If we're lazy here corporately, we are lazy at home. If we are not desperate here, we are not desperate out there. If we cannot get excited here, we're definitely not excited out there. If we struggle with giving here, we're definitely not helping people out there. If we can't support the kingdom of God now, we're not supporting the kingdom of God out there. If we can't love people on a Sunday morning here, we're for sure not encountering and hanging out with church folk out there. People that God's called us to be unified together. There must be an increase of the fear of the Lord in every single one of our lives. And this fear is not a fear. Listen, in a sense, it's a fear of like, God, you can destroy my soul. Jesus makes it clear. Don't fear fear the devil. Fear God who can destroy your soul and your body. God in a moment can make you disappear. He can remove your memory out of everybody's brain as if you never existed. Think about how all-powerful God is. And we nonchalantly come to the house of God from time to time, not desperate, not hungry, not wanting manna, not wanting to get in the river. We want to stay in the outer court. We want God to bless me, bless me, bless me. The fear of the Lord must increase in your household. For you to complete the call of God on your life, the fear of the Lord must increase in your household, in your marriage, in your children. And if you want them to stand before God and hear, well done, a good faithful servant, and you stand back and you got a smile on your face as a proud dad looking at your son, stand before, oh, oh, you know, heavenly father. And he says, well done. And it puts us, you have to lead your family well. Can't wait for that day to be a bystander and my sons come up to the pearly gates. Can you imagine that with your daughters? Hey, Hudson, come here, son. You completed the call. Come on in. Lindsay, good job at raising your kids. Good job at putting the word in them when they were young. You loved your wife well. I don't even know he's going to say anything about how size the church was. But I say, son, you loved your family well. You did good. You completed the call. Come in. There's your mansion over there. Your mansion by my mansion. (laughs) And I love my kids, but their mansion's going to (laughs) be over there somewhere next to you. (laughs) The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord starts with you and him. It starts with, do you trust his love for you? Do you trust that everything he asks of you, it's for your good? It's for your good. Anything he requires of you. Close your eyes for a moment. Act like Paul. Three days, you had an encounter with the Lord, now you're blind for three days. You're blind. You haven't eaten anything, you haven't drank anything. You just had this radical encounter with God. Paul tells, I mean, God tells Paul, I'm gonna send a guy named Ananias to come and lay hands on you, and he's gonna, he's gonna cause you to see again. And while you're blind, though, so you're not distracted by things in the world, let me show you what you're gonna have to suffer for me. What is the cost for you? What is the cost for you? Since the Holy Spirit, what is the cost for you? What is the cost for you? What is God saying? This is what it's going to cost you. If you want to come into the Holy of Holies, if you want to complete everything I've called you to do from this day forward, this is what it's going to cost you. What does that look like for you? Not if you pray, when you pray. Not if you fast, when you fast. Not, I'm going to watch church at home, and I'm going to go to church here, and I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to be faithful. Do not forsake the assembly of gathering together. Not if I tithe, but I'm tithing, and I'm giving more than my tithe, and I'm all in, and everything that I have is yours, Lord. I'm making room in my calendar. I'm making room in my schedule right now. Whatever it takes, God, I want to be a part of this thing. I want to be like a Stephen. I want to be like an Esther. I want to be like a Paul. I want to be like a Philip. God, if you've called me to be an evangelist, so be it. If you call me to be like a Stephen and serve, but you want to move through me through miraculous powers, uh, the, the, the miraculous miracles, through the power of God, so be it. God, whatever it is, I'm, I'm willing to pay the cost. 
I'm willing to lay my life down. I, 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 I need the fear of the Lord to increase, though, in my life where I respect you and I honor you and I revere you more than anybody else. Peter says it like this. Do you think that we need to start obeying you rather than God? You think we need to obey men rather than we're going to obey God? You're wrong. We're going to keep preaching the gospel. We're going to keep doing what we're called to do. We're experiencing resistance, but we're still moving forward. What does it cost you? What is it going to cost you? What is Holy Spirit telling you right now? What is he telling you right now that it's going to cost you? The fear of the Lord must increase in our life. I fear the Lord because I can trust his love for me. There's no evil in God. There's no evil in God at all. There's not one ounce of evil. If you've been hurt, God wants to use that pain and turn it into something beautiful. If you've been wounded, he wants, to, he wants to take that wound. Jesus has scars too. Will you let him make it into a scar for his glory? Will you, will you allow him to make that wound into a scar for his glory? Where you can say, this is the work of the blood. It causes me to forgive. It causes me to say yes to Jesus. It causes me to love people without strings attached. you're going through warfare right now will you allow that warfare to put a backbone in you not cause you to become weak but become strong in the Lord for you to fully rely on him will you fear God at any cost don't go woke with the world be awakened with the spirit of God I even sense it right now there are it may just be a few people, but there's, I sense some people here, you started believing this woke agenda that the enemy is promoting in the world and God's saying, I wanna wake you up today by my spirit. I wanna wake you up today by my spirit. I wanna wake you up today by my spirit. Look up here, there's, a, there's the leader and founder of the Satanist church in South Africa. The leader and founder of the Satanic church in South Africa just recently gave his heart to the Lord just recently gave his life to Jesus. He was doing a satanic ritual, Manny, to receive power from the devil. And when he was in the midst of this satanic ritual, Jimmy, Jesus showed up and gave him a taste of Jesus' power. And that power blew him away and he gave his life to Jesus. That sounds just like Jesus, don't it? That sounds just like Jesus. That sounds just like Christ to show up in the midst of a person where nobody, extreme, most Christians, that's even extreme, many Christians would not go near a person while they're doing a satanic ritual. They would think somehow a demon's gonna jump on them as if they're not covered with the blood. They would be more afraid of somebody doing a satanic ritual, then they would be more afraid of the Lord of saying, God, I know you have my back. Jesus shows up in the midst of this man doing a satanic ritual and opens his eyes and he gives his life to Jesus. And he, he's sharing his testimony on film and he's just crying throughout his testimony. There was another guy who founded, I believe, or at least was the leader of a satanic church down in South Texas. I actually had the honor of meeting this guy a few years ago at a conference. And they opened up this church down in South Texas, not far from a pastor friend of Apostle Barney's, the church that we went to down in, down in Houston area. It's actually where I met Jonathan Shuttlesworth for the first time was at this church. My wife and Caleb and Bree and I, we went down there to see him on a Friday night. But before then, there was a satanic church that opened up and there were Christians who were protesting. Hate protests from Christians against the satanic. Sounds righteous, right? Sounds holy. But every now and then, as this guy would go through his emails, he would read a bunch of hate email from Christians, Darren. But every now and then he'd come across the email of the Father's love. Every now and then he'd come across an email of the Father's love and one email took 
And he went to this church where we were at, and he met with the pastor. He winds up giving his heart to Jesus. And this pastor brought him in. See, just like Holy Spirit wants to bring you in, God will use people, like people in this room, to bring you in closer into a relationship with Jesus. It's the love of the Father that we can trust. The Bible says it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. This fear message is not, I'm, a, I'm afraid of God, and I, I don't want him to kill me, and, and I'm, I'm afraid to ask him for anything, and I'm afraid to, I'm, no, it's not, it's not a timid fear. It's a reverence fear. It's a fear of, I lay my life down. You're my king, you're my master. Do whatever you wanna do in my life. I say yes, because of everything, because of your love for me. Oh, I love you, and I say yes to you, and I fear you, you are my master. It's a love fear. It's not, it's not a timid fear, it's a love fear. It's a love fear, it's, 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 it's a love fest. It's a, I love you so much, I can't do enough for you. You ever tried to outdo God? You can't. The fear of the Lord though, brings you in. He begins to check you and your actions and then, and, then, and then as he cleans you up by his word and by conviction and through the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus and by the convicting of the Holy Spirit, what he does is he, is he brings you in even more and he says that thought that you're thinking about that person, that you, you gotta get rid of that thought. But God, I didn't act on it. I know, I know, I know a year ago you would have acted on it, but, but that, that thought now, I wanna clean up your thoughts. I wanna clean up your emotions. I want you to be emotionally stable now. I, I, I want you to be sound in your mind. I want you to be sound in your soul. I, I don't want you to be back and forth and three months on and six months off and six months on and three months off. I, I want to come in and do a cleansing. Will you let me come in? But, but the only way, that's the only way this works though, my daughter and my, my son is if you if you put your trust in my love, you got to know, I, I, I mean no harm against you. I just, I only want to help. I only want to transform. I only wanna make you more like my son, Jesus. You know, that's God's heart for you and I. He just wants to make us more like Jesus. And then the fear of the Lord begins to settle in. The Bible says, after Saul gave his heart to the Lord, Darren, the Bible says that the church moved into, a, moved into peace. They had, they had great peace throughout three different regions. Judea was one of them, Samaria was another, and there was another one. They moved to this, 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 this time of peace. And the Bible says, the Bible says they, they grew in the fear of the Lord. And they, and they, and they, 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 they let me read it, let me read it, because I'm messing it up. You ready? The church then, it's chapter nine, verse 31. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. And it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. The church became stronger. Somebody say stronger. It became stronger, it became more fortified, it became more unified as the church grew in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. It's the fear of the Lord and it's the encouragement of the Holy Ghost. We're able to grow because of his love. We're able to fear God because of his love for us. This is what I want you to do. I want you to stand up real quietly. Stand up real quietly. Philippians chapter two, verse 12 says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, that's even more important. He says, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Obeying the Lord with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. He's working in those who are striving to obey Him with reverence and fear. Oh, I honor you, Lord. I fear you. Work this world out of me. Work these soulish things out of me. I only want what's from you in me. That's all I want. That's my greatest desire is to become more like your son, Jesus. And I cannot do that without you, Holy Ghost. I need you to bring me in so God, you can raise me up. Will you say that right now? Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring me in so God, you can raise me up. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring me in so God, you can raise me up 
If you want to be raised up and you want to be brought in and you want to move from an outer court or an inner court, and you say, man, I'm not, I, I want to be in the Holy of Holies. I want to stay in that place of Holy of Holies. Man, I want to be a part of that. I, 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 want, I, want, to, I want to get out of this woke agenda with the world. Maybe there's a few of you here like that, uh, that, that dealing with those thoughts and that mindset. Man, I want God to wake me up at, at, any, at any point in your, like just there's different people and different levels, different journeys, if you will. Man, you're like, I just, I just want to be in that place in relationship with God where I'm, I, I'm, I'm contending to be in the Holy of Holies. The Bible says in one translation, strive to enter into this place of rest. I want to tell you what the Lord told me. He said this to me earlier before I came up to preach to you. He said, there are people here who have gotten used to living life without the peace of God. These people have allowed the enemy to move them out of the flow. There are people here who have gotten used to living life without the peace of God. You love the Lord, but you are not living life in the flow. You're not living life in the peace of the Lord. You love the Lord, but there is a lack of peace in your life. There is a lack of joy in your life. There is a lack of serving God in your life. There is a lack of saying yes to the Lord in your life. And you say, man, I want to stay. I want to enter into this flow. I want to stay in peace. I'm going to fight to stay in peace. The devil's not going to rob my joy anymore, rob my peace anymore. The devil's not, I'm not going to allow the devil to lie to me anymore. There's so many different things that like, I just kind of want to generically give this response because there are people here who are struggling with being convinced that God is 100% good. This, this response is for you. This response is for those who need to be awakened by the fire of the Holy Ghost. This response is for those who say, man, I want to enter into this place of holy of holies. I want to move into this place of rest and peace and joy and love. If anything that I'm saying is resonating with you, I want you to step out from where you are and come to the front right now and just let Holy Spirit work in your life. If there is a tug, if there is an inclination, if there is anything at all that God's saying, I'm talking to you, I want to bring you in. I want, and you say, I am all, I want to be all in. If you're not all in and you say, man, I want to be all in, come down to the front. Hallelujah. If you say, Lindsay, I need the fear of the Lord to increase in my life. To be honest with you, I love the Lord, but I don't fear Him like I should. Now look up here for a moment. For the spirit of religion that's in the room telling you that you're 99% good. This is for anybody who says, I need the fear of the Lord to increase. I, I invite you to come. This is for any person whether you're a mature believer or you just gave your heart to the Lord. If there's 0.1% of your life that is not saying, man, I'm not fearing the Lord in this area, this is for you. Step out from where you are and come down. The fear of the Lord must increase in this house. The fear of the Lord, I declare, will increase in this house. Being sensitive to sin, oh, it's just a lie. That's all it was for Ananias and Sapphira. What have you justified in your life? Saying, oh, it's just this. Oh, it's just an attitude. Oh, it was just, it was just a conversation. Oh, they never heard me talk about them behind their back. I was just talking to my spouse about them. I was just talking to my friend about them. Oh, it's not a big deal. I'm telling you right now, God is increasing conviction in this room because he loves us. Not because he's mad at us, but because he loves us. He loves you so much that he's willing to give you a chance to come down and allow him to bring you in so he can raise you up. Come on, I want to hang out for another moment. Every person close their eyes for a minute. You say, Pastor, that's me. If your heart's pounding, step out from where you are. Come down. Come down, come down. Come on, come on. I'm fighting for you right now. There's some things in your life that aren't lining up with the Word of God. You know they're not. You're not fully surrendered. You need to come down. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's make things right today. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. Oh, you got time. You don't know how much time you got. Come on. Ananias and Sapphira didn't realize they were going to die in a moment. By the way, you're going to drop dead like your husband. Boom. She didn't even have time to think about her husband's death. She opened the door for the devil to come in and bring havoc and death. 
I hear the Lord saying somebody here is dealing with suicide and you've opened the door to allow the devil to come in and convince you suicide is the way to go, but you've been tormented because you know in your heart it's not the way to go. You're dealing with torment. Suicidal thoughts, it's just tormenting you, kill yourself. Kill, but deep down you know it's not the answer, it's not the answer, but you just keep hearing, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Who are you? Come down quickly. If you're not down here yet, come down. You've opened the door through sin. Who are you? The fear of the Lord will put an end to that. Repentance will put an end to that. I'm telling you right now, God wants to set you free. He reveals to deal. He doesn't reveal to embarrass. He reveals to deal. He reveals to take care of business. God wants to set you free. Are you fed up with it? If you are, come down right now. Torment, torment, torment. Who else is dealing with torment right now? If that's you, come down to the front. You're dealing with torment, come down. God wants to set you free. Who here is dealing with suicide? Not to embarrass you. Look at me if that's you. Don't look at me if it's not you. I don't want to embarrass you. Who's dealing with suicide? Look at me. I'm going to take a moment and scan. Who is that? Suicide. Torment. Who's dealing with torment? Somebody here is dealing with some crazy thoughts. I'm talking about like very sexual perverted thoughts. Thoughts that you're like, there's no way I'd ever do that, but it's tormenting me. Who are you? Come down right now. You want to be set free. Crazy thoughts. Crazy thoughts. Crazy thoughts. If that's you, make eye contact with me. If it's not you, don't look at me in my eyes. If that's you, look at me. Crazy thoughts. Sexually perverted thoughts. Thank you, Lord. That's one that's really embarrassing. I, I caught what I said after I said it. Come down right now. I understand that's very humbling and embarrassing. I sense somebody here has been molested when you were a child and you haven't gotten over it yet. You say, you even have said to people, oh, I've gotten over it, but deep down you have not gotten over it. I hear the conversations happening. Oh yeah, I've gotten, oh yeah, we're good. Oh man, yeah, God's really, he's really helped me through it. But deep down, you're still hurt. You've only told certain people. Make eye contact with me if that's you. Don't look at me if it's not you. I want to know who you are. I want to pray for you. God's moving right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, God cares about you so much. So much. So much. So much. He wants to bring you in. He's going to clean you up today. He's going to remove pain. I believe there are multiple people dealing with shame and guilt, like just heavy, heavy shame and heavy, heavy guilt. And it's been sitting on you for a long time. Heavy shame and heavy guilt. There's even one person that just started sitting on you. You just got your life right with Jesus and the enemy's come and said, there's no way, there's no way God's gonna use you. You just got your life right, but you have been dealing with heavy shame and heavy guilt. Who are you? Now this is one I do want you to respond for. If you're still in your seat, come down. The fear of the Lord is increasing right now. Put your hands on your heart all over this place. Say, fear of the Lord, you got to increase in my life. I yield to you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, God, for downplaying any sin in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for being lazy in my pursuit with you. I need you to increase in my life, oh God. I need you to do it. I can't do it without you. I got to have you, Lord. Holy Spirit, bring me in so that the Father can raise me up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy Ghost, do it right now. Do it right now. A deep work. 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 Come on. 
Let him touch you deep right now. Yield, 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 yield. Just relax and yield. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just see the word of God cutting hearts right now, piercing hearts. What must I do to be saved? They said after Peter preached the first message. Oh, it was such a convicting word. That's what I see happening right now. What must I do for the fear of the Lord to increase? What has to happen? What has to shift? What has to turn? What has to, what has to get out of the way? Hallelujah. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. God's just getting started. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Peace, 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 peace be still, peace be still, that lying devil, I silence you, peace be still, now, freedom, freedom, every lie of the devil I break off of you, in Jesus' name. Torment stops now, now, now. No more shame, no more heaviness. No, daughter of the king, royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Every lie of the devil saying you don't love God enough. You need to love God harder. You need to show God more. That spirit of religion, I cut it off of you now and I thank you for freedom in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit's infusing you with the Father's love right now. Driving out every, every evil spirit. Go, 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 go. Come out in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, thank you. Go. Freedom. Peace. Be still. The blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus covers you. Peace be still. Peace be still. Let it go. Let her go. There it is. There it is. Go. 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 The love of the Father infuses you. Every evil spirit has got to go. Every evil spirit has got to go. Every evil spirit has
Hallelujah. Let me tell you right now, my friend just got delivered. Let me tell you right now, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna shift gears. That's just one. That's just one out of others that God's gonna do this for. I'm about to release our prayer team. We're just gonna go through and we're gonna stay in the same pocket. God's not done. We're just getting started. I would encourage you not to leave if you don't have to. I would encourage you just to stay in this atmosphere. Watch what God does, even if you're sitting in our eagle's nest up there. It doesn't matter. You're in an atmosphere like this. God reminded me earlier before my wife came up to transition our service. He reminded me of a dream that I had of a house. Prayer team, I need you to listen to this. God's gonna have you impart this into people. It's just gonna be a supernatural actually infusion from the Lord. You know what triggered? You know what triggered what just happened over here? I said the Holy Spirit's infusing you with the Father's love. The Bible says in Romans that it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that actually, I forget how it words it, but it's the Holy Spirit. That's how God fills you with the love of the Father. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's like the Holy Spirit is the vessel that God uses to fill us with his love. But it's God's Spirit, right? God is a spirit. So it's God's Spirit that fills us with his love, and he is love. So he's filling us actually with himself. And where there's demons and evil spirits, which are the same thing, where there's wrong mindsets, root issues, it gets exposed because the Father's love comes in and God is what? He's light. He's light. There's no darkness in him. He's light. And he comes in and he begins to shine his light on areas that he wants to deliver you from. I mean, she's over here looking at me. What is happening? Why, why this demon's trying to come out of her? What is, she's coherent, but she's like, what is going on? So the point is this, Jesus did it. We're called to do this and he wants us to walk like he did. He wants us to walk in light where there's nothing hidden in us, no wrong mindsets, nothing like that. All right, this is why God cares about all these things. I know they're embarrassing, but they're gonna turn into your story. That's what's gonna happen. I'm so proud of her. She just, man, God highlighted her to me. He's, those of you who looked at me, I'm gonna come to you personally. Pray it to me. If you see me coming, unless God's already moving and stuff, that's fine. Do your thing. But here's the deal. If you want to get down here and you say, man, I need the fear of the Lord to increase in my life. But it starts with, I don't fully trust the Father's love. I sense there's one person here that you don't fully trust his love. I'm not sure exactly why. It's because you've been hurt. I don't know what the issue is. But you don't fully trust his love. You love him. You know he loves you, but there's an area in your life Actually, there's like two or three areas in your life. That you're just like, ah. You're having a hard time, it's like a roadblock. It's like God begins to bring you in and then a roadblock hits. It's because of what happened. God wants to turn that pain into beauty. He wants to turn that into your story and he's gonna use you to set many people free. If that's you, come down. He's reaching out one more time before we, before we move on. We're gonna go back into this Holy Spirit song. Bring me in, bring me in. Prayer team, get ready. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now. Just lift your hands. Get back into this receiving mode from the Holy Spirit. Don't be distracted. Don't be worried about anything going on around you. If you hear an evil spirit come out of somebody, you focus on you and God. God wants to touch you right now. If you hear somebody praying, Next to you, prayer team, just be sensitive to people who are receiving the Lord right now, just receiving His presence. We don't want to pray so loud, we distract other people. Just be mindful. Y'all just sing this right here loud enough where it's good, but not too loud where the prayer team has to yell. Father, I thank you right now for everything you're doing. Prayer team, get ready. I thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. You're bringing us in. <laughs> you're bringing your body. <laughs> you're bringing your church in. Where we're more stronger and unified because of your spirit and because of your blood, King Jesus. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person here. 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 Hallelujah. 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 You've already asked God to forgive you of your sins. Now just let Holy Spirit bring you in. Bring you in.
If you got unforgiveness in your heart, say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for holding on to unforgiveness. I forgive. Prayer team, you go for it. Church, I just want you to worship back there. Just worship. Just worship. Just worship. Fear of the Lord increase. Fear of the Lord increase. Fear of the Lord increase. Love of the Father. Holy Spirit, bring us into this place of trusting you. Trusting you. Trusting you.
sing it so much better it's so much better so much better your way so much better your way so much better even higher. I shared this one time. Janae came up to me and said, you know, white and blue flames. I looked that up after you shared that. It's the hottest kind of flames. It's super hot. This time we're going to close out this service. I may or may not have people lay hands on you. I don't know. I'll say no and then watch me say yes. And then I'll say yes and watch me not release you. So I'm just going to leave it open. Stick my foot in my mouth. This is what I, I honestly sense from the Lord is to do this. We're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. We're going to fan into flame the gift that God's given us. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. And I want you to watch supernaturally without people touching you. This is, this is what's amazing about this. It lets you know God sees you and then boom, he'll, he touches you right where you are. You don't have to wait for this. We're not gonna be a church that waits on an altar call. That's not, it's not who we are anymore. We're not waiting for an altar call, okay? You can respond to any altar call you want to, however many times you want to. But the point is, God's raising up houses. We are his house. We are his house. And you're going to see the fire of God put a light underneath you. 
Just watch. I really believe that's about to happen. Fan into flame the gift. I just want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to sing, bring us in. And as they sing this, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, if you have yet to release this gift of tongues, say, God, I want it. And then by the Spirit, begin to release it. That's how easy it is. I know, I know it goes past natural thinking. Like, what does that mean? Just trust the Lord. But I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I want you to see the Holy Ghost just light you on fire. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. Just relax and let the Holy Ghost have his way with you. All right? So, Father, I thank you right now that you want to increase your fire on the inside of every single one of our lives, on the inside of our hearts. So, Father, I thank you. You've given us a tool to fan in a flame the gift of God, this desire, this pursuit to want to go after you. We are without excuse. I thank you. The fear of the Lord's increasing. I thank you, Father. We're putting our trust in your love. I thank you, Lord. We believe there is not one ounce of fault or evil in you. In Jesus' mighty name, fire of God, fall and consume your people. Expose fleshly desires that are not from you. Expose worldly desires that are not from you. Expose mindsets. God, expose it. Have your way right now. Have your way right now. Show Rabalandi Arabaland Robolom Riarabalanda. Kia Rabaland Robolondo show. Kia Rabalanda show. Fire of God, I ask you to increase. Fire of God, I ask you to increase. God of fire, increase that fire inside of us. By your spirit, increase that fire. Increase that fire. Increase that fire on the inside of every single one of us. Show Rabalando Robolondo Rabalanda. Chiarabalando Robolondo. Carabalando Robolondo. Chiarabalandi Arabalando. Co Rabalandi Arabalanda. Co Robolondo Show Rabalanda Sha. Chiarabalando Robolondo. Chiarabalandi Arabalanda. Co Robolondo Show. Co Rabalanda Sha. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Fire fall, fire fall, fire of God increase. Increase in this house so it can increase in Hunt County. Increase in this house so we can take it to every corner of Hunt County. Increase it. Supernatural miracles, healings, signs, wonders, miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Increase, increase, increase. Only you can do it, Lord. Sing signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on, he's bringing us to the supernatural. He's bringing us in to walk in the supernatural. Show Rabalandi Arabalando.
presence of God is here. Holy Spirit, increase. Increase in this house, Holy Spirit. Increase in this house, Holy Spirit. The spirit of Judas has been exposed and Stephen's are rising up. I hear the Holy Spirit saying the spirit of Judas has been exposed. The spirit of Judas loves money more than they love Jesus. Oh, they say they love Jesus. They're spiritual in their vocabulary. They talk spiritual things. They sound spiritual when you talk to them. They sound very spiritual. They sound very, very holy. We could have used that money for this. We could have used that money for that. All the, all the while, they're not tithing. They're not giving. They're not building the kingdom with their own money. It's all about them. Very spiritual. The spirit of Judas has been exposed today. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm giving them time to yield to my conviction. And Stephen's are rising up. Men and women of God who aren't apostles, who aren't prophets, who aren't pastors, who aren't teachers or evangelists. But they have the wisdom of God and they're full of the Spirit of God. And they move in the supernatural. They no longer look to a man or a woman to move in the supernatural where they spectate but they get a hold of the word of God for themselves. If that's you, lift up your hands right here like you're receiving this. Say, God, I wanna be a modern day Stephen. Where I move in the supernatural. Where I'm full of wisdom, I'm full of grace. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm hanging out in the Holy of Holies. You're bringing me in, God, so you can raise me up. Say, God, I want to do great exploits for you. Oh, come on, church. Say, God, I want to do great exploits for you. Come on, he's stretching your endurance right now. He's enlarging your capacity to handle more of him, to be in his presence longer. Holy Spirit, I thank you for everything you've done in our hearts today. I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I speak healing over anybody in this room who needs healing in their body. Anybody dealing with sickness, I speak healing into their body. In Jesus' mighty name. Supernatural healing power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I pray for you? What the heck? Can you come up here? Hallelujah. your name? Will? God's got his hand on your life. He has a call of God on your life. You haven't gone too far. Conviction has got your heart and you're responding to it. Father says he's very proud of you and he loves you very much. He's going to use you. You're going to reach people that not everybody can reach. Father, I thank you for the hand of God that you've put on him. I thank you for your hand that's on him. And I thank you, Lord, that he's saying yes to your yes. He's saying yes to you. Deep supernatural work. Every taste for the world that he has, I think you're supernaturally taking it out of him. I thank you, Lord, every taste for the world. You're supernaturally taking it out of him. Put a fire on the inside of him that will never, ever go out. You will preach the gospel. You will preach and you will be undignified in your pursuit of the Lord. You will lose friends, but you will gain friends. You will create enemies because you love Jesus more than anybody else. Father, I thank you. You're going to use him in a powerful way. I thank you, Lord, that you see him. proud of him I just keep hearing it in my spirit he says he is very proud of you 
He's very proud of you. He is very proud of you. He loves you. He loves, loves, loves you. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You haven't gone too far. You're right where he wants you. Just let him consume you. Let him consume you. Thank you, Lord. Every desire, every desire for the world, every taste, any addiction, I break it off of him right now. And I thank you for freedom in every area of his life. In every area. That's the Holy Ghost on you right there. That's the love of the Father right there. You gonna feel an increase? Come here. Watch this. Just give me a hug. Give me a hug. Come here. You ever felt the power of God like this? You haven't? He said you're his boss. You treat him good? Always. He's only 16. I thought this guy was like 85. Look how tall and mature he looks. I want you to put your hands on him. You okay with that? Feel the power of God through your boss's hands. You're not going to see him the same after this. Father's love flowing through him into you. Stretch forth your hands, church. This is what it's like to have the body of Christ behind you. There you go. That's the Holy Ghost, man. That's the Holy Ghost. terminology spiritual father you heard of that like a spiritual dad yeah pursue him like a spiritual dad that's just what I hear pursue him like a spiritual dad your life will never be the same your life will never be the same he's going to get angry when you have to travel and preach because he's going to be missing out on one of his best workers I just see him being a key voice in your life in this season Listen to him. Dude, it's so good to meet you. Cowboy. Sixteen years old, looking like a grown man. He said sixteen. I was like, dude, you do not look sixteen. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Couple behind right here. Can I pray for you guys? Yeah. Yeah, you're like matching. Y'all married? Come on down. I feel like the price is right. Come on down. How long have you been married? A year and a half. Congrats, man. You live in Caddo? What are you doing here? Ah, Frankie, Frankie. You guys got a uh, church home? You do? Good to hold hands. You guys got any kids? You want kids? Lots of them? Two? So I shouldn't prophesy like quadruplets over you. She said, what's your name? How old are you guys? 27 and 25. You knew the question was coming before I even asked you. That was it. Compassionate. You're both very compassionate. You're very tender. You're very tender. I hear doormat. Don't be a doormat. Don't be a walking doormat. Can I see your hand? I see God moving you into a season where he built, he's building a backbone in you. Just receive this right here. He's building a backbone in you. You're new in your marriage. But God's going to continue to fortify this marriage. 
the hand of God is on both of your lives. When people encounter you, they encounter peace and joy and love. I don't know if y'all have a heart for like, I know you only want like two kids, but I don't know if it's a kid's ministry or an orphanage or what, but I just see lots of kids around you. I don't know if one of you feel called to be a kid's pastor, if you've even thought about it, but I just see kids. I really sense that for you. Give me your name again, Taya. And I see teenage boys hanging out with you and you impacting teenage boys. I feel like you have a story, something that maybe you don't share much, but God's gonna have you share. It's gonna impact teenage boys' lives. It's gonna help them. I see a lot of kids. It's like you have the anointing for kids' ministry on your life. It's like you're really, does that make sense? You feel that? Does that bear witness with you? You ever thought about that? Never thought about it? I'll just weigh it out. Maybe I'm way off in left field but it's okay. It's all right. Father, I thank you. Come here. I thank you, Lord, because if I come any further, I may fall off this stage. I thank you, Lord, for this couple. The younger generation. Are you techie? Are you techie at all? You do anything with computers or anything? No? You creative at all? You can be. What do you do for a living? Hey, Josh, come here. This guy trained himself on how to be real techie. I just feel impressed for you to lay hands on him. I don't know. It's like almost, I sense like there's going to be a door that opens and an opportunity that gets presented to you. But you're like, I've never even thought about it. But they're like, if you wanted it, it's yours. And you're like, no, you don't understand. I don't even know how to do this. I'm like, yeah, we know. But we just think you're the guy. I don't know, but it's going to be a blessing financially to you guys. And I just speak blessing over y'all, financial blessing as well. In Jesus' name. I bless this couple in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? So good. Very good. Wow. Well, listen. That's what we're going to do. As Josh is praying for this guy, I'm going to hand it over to our MC. Is Josh the MC? Josh is the MC. He wrapped that up just in time. Great to meet you guys. Church, I love you. It's good to be back home. You know we're back when we go long. Yep. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> oh, church. Um, man, power of God is here. Thank you guys for being with us. Just a couple of quick things as we're, we're wrapping up here. Um, first off, if, uh, you, if you dropped kids off, here's it is, this may be new, you may be your first couple of times here. We ask that you, the same place you dropped them off is the same place you pick them up. So right out around to the white desk, they'll get you your kids. I know that there's a lot of movement and stuff, but it's just, it's for the protection of our kids. It's for the protection of you and all of those things. Um, if today we're doing a thing called Discover Oasis, and maybe you're sitting here saying, oh, what is Discover Oasis? This is where we, we invite people in to, to find out more about Oasis. Maybe you're saying, hey, I don't have a church home, and I want to get plugged in. I want to I want to find out more, and I want to find out more about myself. Um, this is a, a time where we get to spend with you. You get to learn about us. We get to learn a little bit about you. And so some of you already know, hey, I'm, I'm a part of Discover Oasis. I'm doing a thing today. But even if you're here today and you're like, I you know, I just, I, I don't want to wait for the next one. I want to get plugged in. You can hang out. That's going to happen right in here. As soon as uh, kind of we get everything set up, Kayla and her team will get everything set up. Um, that That's that's it. I would encourage you guys just to go out, honor. Man, let, let your honor be high in, in the community. Let, let You'll be surprised what, what will happen in your life if you honor the people who maybe you don't even feel like they deserve honor. My goodness, like go go out, be honored, be <laughs> humble, humble yourself to people. We love you guys. Be in Oasis wherever you are. You guys can go ahead and uh, be dismissed. If you guys would, take come on conversations out so that our team can get set up and ready for Discover Oasis. We love you guys. Have a great Sunday.